Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time, your online community to get motivation, practical tips, and peer support during your journey of PhD. Have you ever experienced the frustration that you don't remember where your file is located? Hi, Vera. Can you send me the proposal we wrote together last year? Just hold on one second. Okay, yeah, I can wait. Let me look. Final version one, final version two, final, final. Let me call you back. Yeah, I'll, you can call I'll me get later. back to you. Unbelievable. I found it. None of my school education taught me how to organize files on my digital space. So today, let me show you my organization tips and maybe that is going to help you create your own. If we haven't already met, my name is Vera and I created PhD Coffee Time to share little practical tips like this that I have faced and found really useful for PhD and postdoc. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and if you like my content, make sure to give me a like. And trust me, when you do PhD, your files going to accumulate exponentially your brain and your capacity to remember things will decrease over the time. So you need a system that is going to protect you from losing time on searching files. Research and innovation is built upon your ability to focus and to create. And it requires kind of a white canvas and organized life. I've learned the hard way how not to organize folder and name a file. Like do not use untitled one doc as your work document, draft one or project fish or new folder as a folder. And if I can time travel, sometime I thought maybe I can go back to my past self and tell her, Vera, name it properly. If you're in postdoc, thesis chapter one is probably no longer a good folder name for you. But if you're a PhD, thesis underscore chapter one is probably good enough to contain all your chapter one materials. Um, let's discuss what is a good project name. You need something that is consistent, short and unique. And you can search in your folder over time to remember this is the project. So say for example, NASA mission project Apollo and more recently COVID-19. So think about what you can name first. You can be as creative as possible. That can be an acronym like COVID-19 or like Apollo, but use them consistently and make sure they identify your project that is something you can remember in the future. And you can write it down on the logbook and remember this is the name. After you decided what is your project name, you have to create a folder under your document. And within the project name, I will have a folder created for data. That's everything you collect in the lab and any raw data that you need to analyze and process is in the data file and statistical analysis and your figure output that can be in the folder of data. I always put a separate folder for manuscript. That's where all my PDF reference file lives, as well as on my draft of Word document when I write content for my publication. There should be a folder also containing the presentation slides that you use for this one particular project. That include not only the PowerPoint file, obviously, you will also have visuals that you're deciding to, to put in your PowerPoint. It could be graphics that you make for your own presentation. You may be drawing something from Illustrator or Inkscape. That's the place you will have all these visuals and illustration stored in one place. So data, manuscript and presentation, they are the three major folders I will create for each project. But if that sounds like a lot of folder to create for a project, and you're not alone because I'm not the most organized person as well. I'm forcing myself to do this for my future, Vera, to, to not hate myself now. Um, so one of the middle ground I found is if I'm working on this folder for the next few weeks and I'm going to click on it a lot, 
then it's okay I put those folder in the root of the system like if I'm going to click every day it's okay but after the completion of the analysis or the first draft and you change the version of it then I will make some prioritized time to just move those folder out of my way in this man uh, in this separate subfolders and in the long run I still have an organization system that I can ask myself later where it is and I know where it should be so for my institution we always have acronym for project names and I didn't know how important this is until I go to the refrigerator and if we see those names acronym on the bottle we know those materials are labeled according to the need of that project and it's really clear and it's a simple way to make sure you have unique names for each project now we, there is one way naming my PDF is using uh, the last name the year and the keyword and separating them by, by underscore please note that is is what is what the keyword important to your project so it could be a paper relevant to a skills like PCR and I want to quickly look at primer PCR so I will have primer PCR on that the topic of that paper can be totally different but the keyword is decided by me you can say review of that subject so it's pretty standard everyone use last name and years but I personally realize using keyword as underscore items is going to increase your chance of remembering where the file is and of course when you are searching for your PDF you can also sort the files by date and also by type so you will see only PDFs and only the recent one another type of files that we have to deal with as a researcher is the original files it could be excel sheets it could be word document and it is a evolving process every day your thought is different or your approach of handling the data is different make sure you name everything consistently using project name Apollo for example uh, underscore a six digit date of when you created that file so every time you have major changes you are going to keep track of them as different version if I suddenly have a second thought about what I should delete and what I should have kept then I will go back to my older version then I will have everything there I am not the most organized person personally but that's the same for my digital space and I, t I would like to make one suggestion is make sure you don't let your personal files get in the way of your professional files and one way I found really useful is to make sure all my videos lives under the document video folder all my pictures personal ones lives under documents and pictures folders that way I know they are disorganized but they're out of my sight and all my work is under document and Apollo or document COVID-19 folder and when I click open that folder it's just white space and files that I see so I'm tunnel visioning to just the file and task that I'm working on um, and I try not to use desktop as a space to save that file and if you have traveled for your first time to a conference you'll be amazed by how many more files you have to keep track on for just your case of reimbursement like receipts from a hotel and flight booking confirmation and you have to keep hold on to those um, you have to hold on to those files until you get reimbursed and to me those are quite distracting if I have them floating around um, so I discover if I create a lab others folder then I can save all the receipts and all the administrative paperwork even my visa cases I have a visa folder specifically for that so that I'm not going to just run into my passport copy when I'm trying to do data analysis another type of files that we have to deal with as a researcher is the original files it could be excel sheets it could be word document um, they are, you are creating this file so after saying all of this folder creation and file naming system I have to mention you have to have a safe way to store your data and back up all your folder if I have something that is actively writing I will put it on Google Drive or send an email to my boss so that we both have a copy of the draft 
I always back up everything with two external hard drives and also my own internal memory on the computer. So now after I say this, make sure you back up your data if you haven't done it in the last few weeks. I wish someone has taught me this in a class and this is why I make this in a video format so you can share it with anyone who needs the tips or you have a messy coworker who doesn't organize the file, send them this video and I'm happy to help. But I want to also encourage you to make a folder for yourself, for your professional development. We spend a lot of time, maybe most of the academic research time living in that specialized research niche. But often when PhD students graduate, they found themselves in a very limiting situation. Even being a professor, you have to know how to budget for your class, you need to teach. So no matter what's your career goal, you have to add more professional development idea for yourself. If you want to be a professor, you probably need to start learning how to write proposal, how to budget for something, how to teach better. Pro chances are postdoc never teach and you never learn how to teach. So this is an important folder you, I want everyone to create. And if you want to get a job in the industry, you have to start learning how to do Excel better. You have to start learning how to communicate professionally and how to manage a project. Um, I would say for both parts, you have to learn how to manage a project. It is recommended that every PhD and postdoc spend 10% of our time in the week. That is, if you work for 40 hours, you should use four hours a week on a topic that you choose that you think are important to your future career. Like I've spent time learning Excel, I've learned um, this month at the moment, I'm learning data science and how to, how to write code with Python and French lessons and video editing, because I think this may become handy for my future. If I need to make a tutorial technically and I have to speak to a camera and I know what to do and the best way to do it is by learning and spending time on it. So for now, PhD Coffee Time is my professional development and you are here to help me as well to become a better video editor and also a person talking to the camera. So I hope it makes sense and um, I hope it motivates you to really get serious about developing your own needs. Now we are all at home, we have two more hours or one more hours every day that you don't have to be traveling to work. So this time can be spent on personal development tasks, such as learning online, going to a webinar, or just talking to a friend who has the experience that you need and learning from that person. And I believe in setting small, achievable goal, one step at a time. So your homework today is to go back and think about what is that one aspect of future skills that you want to have, what is missing from your PhD, and how can you improve yourself? I am here to motivate you to do as much as you can. And if you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button, share it with your friends and motivate more people to do the same. And I really hope this is a non-judgmental and open online community that helps everyone to stay connected and feel positive about your journey in PhD. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.